All right. When your child starts complaining about a sore throat, your first course, qu your first question is, is this strep? Is it? Well, strep throat cases in February were nearly 30 percent higher than in previous peak in February of 2017. So here to talk about what parents and uh, can do is Dr. Miranda Wynn. She's from HCA Midwest. Great to have you here, Dr. Wynn. It's good to see great you. To be here. So I told you before we got on here that I was going to try to say the technical medical term for strep. Let's strep. hear it. Let's hear it. Strephalococcica. No. Strephala... Strephala... Cough. No. All right. I give up. What is it? Streptococcal tonsillitis. Streptococcal... So what is it again? Streptococcal. Streptococcal tonsillitis. Tonsillitis. Thank you, Dr. Wynn. Of course. Uh, so uh, how, how, do, how do you get it and what are, what are the symptoms here and what, what, is it, what does it mean? So overall in general, the most common upper respiratory infections are viral, but there is a percentage that's caused by a bacteria called group A strep. So group A strep is a bacteria, like I said, mm -hmm. um, and it's common in the environment that we are exposed to. Um, we get it from cough or respiratory droplets. So if someone coughs and doesn't wash their hands or sneezes and doesn't wash their hands, it's very easily contagious. Very highly contagious. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a difference between just strep and invasive strep. What Correct. is invasive strep? So invasive strep is when your group A strep no longer is contained in what is commonly like strep throat, where it's just in our throat or just affecting our lymph nodes and causing fever. Now it's causing and affecting other organ systems like your lung or your heart. And that can be very deadly, which is why treating strep throat is so important to stop it from progressing mm -hmm. to that. Are yeah. upper respiratory uh, infections, are, are they on the rise right now? They are. They wow. are on the rise. And I think it has to do with the post, um, you know, COVID pandemic effect. Mm -hmm. We were doing all these extra things to keep ourselves healthy. And now with us being back to our daily lives, you know, maybe we're not washing our hands as, mm. as cleanly as we used to. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, being in close quarters, being socially around each other a lot more, which is good for the soul, but mm -hmm. not necessarily good for... Yeah, that's a great observation. Yeah. I know I'm not washing my hands as frequently as I used right, to. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess I want to know, because I've wondered about how do you know distinctively, okay, this is strep and not just a cold with sore throat. Like, is there anything that kind of gives a distinct uh, indication that this is strep? I would love to have a clear-cut answer for okay. that. I really <laughs> okay. would. But a lot of the times, it's a mixed picture. And especially with this season, what I've noticed is that people with very mild symptoms that may not have clear-cut strep throat by the, you know, the medical Bible, per se, mm -hmm. I still tend to test them when I see them in urgent care because it is so prevalent right now. And so my biggest thing is, you know, preventing spread. And so mm. we have a good treatment and it's curative as long as we can treat it appropriately. Okay. Yeah. Are medications available? So there was a little bit of a shortage previously and it wasn't necessarily with the medication, the antibiotic itself. It was with the um, infant or the suspension. So the okay. ones that kids can take because pills are hard. Mm -hmm. So what we've learned is that you can crush those tabs if we need to, but now it's very eased up. And so we don't see a shortage anymore. All right. All right. Dr. Mm -hmm. Wynn, great to see you. Thank, Thank you so much it. for being Thank with you. us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. All right. We'll be right back.